It's an outrage! No one makes a fool of Ferdinand Octavius Pratt! Sir, are you all right? You seem to be in some distress. All right? Do I look all right? I've been kidnapped! How can you be kidnapped when you're right here? What sort of question is that? Of course I'm right here. I've more than one frame. Do you only have one home? It's my other frame. It's been stolen. And by students, no less. They paid filthy fees to steal my other frame. Oh dear, that sounds awful. Well, awful is exactly what Astoria Cricket is. She's behind all of this. She and her friends were moaning about me of all the nerve. Then I heard a plot to enlist a gang of good-for-nothings to have me stolen from the three broomsticks. That's why my other frame hung. Hovel of a place. Though I suppose one could do worse. I once knew a portrait who ended up in the hog's head. No one's heard from him since. Right. So, back to your frame. Ah, yes. There I was, powdering my wig, and the next thing I knew, I was being manhandled by rogues and carried off. As if I can afford not to be at my post. I do important work for the headmaster, and I need my other frame back at the three broomsticks. Just who is Astoria Cricket, and what would she want with your frame? She's a fourth-year troublemaker, that's who. She and her band of hoodlums discuss all sorts of misdeeds right under my nose, and then resent me for overhearing them. I can only assume they took my frame in some misguided attempt to punish me for doing my job. What do you mean you do important work for the headmaster? Let's just say I overhear quite a bit in Serona's fine establishment, and the headmaster likes to know all about it. He's come to count on me in this regard. Reminds me of my prefect days. <sighs> I don't suppose you have any idea where your stolen frame was taken. Can you see anything from it? I most certainly can! They brought me to a ruin of all places. Some crumbling atrocity surrounded by water from the sound of it. Oh, I do also recall seeing the coast on the way. I could look into the matter for you. Oh, would you? How marvellous. Do it quickly, though, won't you? The place they took me to is quite beneath me. Off you go, then. Astoria Cricket? That depends. Am I in trouble? Ferdinand Pratt thinks you should be. Says you stole his frame. I wouldn't call it stolen. Relocated's more like it. How do I put this nicely? Ferdinand Pratt is a postulant boil, and he's lucky I didn't have him sealed in a wall. Surely he can't be that terrible. Can he? All he does is spy on students in here and report back to the headmaster. Sometimes, if there's nothing to report, he'll make it up. I spent four hours in detention last week, all because he told Black that I was planning to drain the lake, whatever that means. It was the last straw. He and his frame had to go. May I ask where you put him? Oh, I didn't put him anywhere. The frame is likely with the fine gents I paid to snatch it. They camp in a ruin by the coast. I just wanted it far enough away that I'd never have to think about Ferdinand Pratt ever again. You do know he's screaming in the library as we speak. Oh, for the love of Merlin. If you ask me, he's got nothing to scream about. I could have had him put in the hog's head. The pampered Pratt would have hated it. Grimy walls, smell of goats. And the patrons, they eat snooty princes like Ferdinand for dinner. But what's done is done. He isn't here anymore, and if I were you, I should enjoy it. Lovely chatting with you. Clever? How offensive. Hello, Mr. Moon. Oh, greetings! Uh, any luck removing some more of those demiguy statues? I actually have some moons for you. Oh, my mind feels lighter already knowing those statues are gone. 
I did promise to show you how to improve casting Alahamora once you'd brought me enough moons. Oh, with that knowledge, you'll be able to break open even stronger locks. Mm. However, we don't yet know who's behind these statues. <laughs> Still plenty of the foul things lying in wait to torture me. Oh. If you bring me more moons, I'll show you how to cast the most powerful form of Alahamora known to wizard kind. <laughs> At least known to me. Keep looking for those moons, hmm? You'll save my sanity and we may get to the bottom of whoever's behind all of this. Hello, Mr. Moon. Oh, greetings. Uh, any luck removing some more of those demiguise statues? I actually have some moons for you. Dear me, you have been busy. Incredible, thank you. You're ready for the final Alahamora lesson. With this knowledge, no lock shall ever stand in your way. You have done all I asked. I only wish I knew who put those statues everywhere in the first place. <sighs> Alas. If you do find more, please feel free to remove them. You'll be doing your caretaker a huge service. And if I ever find out who the bully is behind this cruel trick, I shall let you know. Thank you once again for your assistance and tenacity. Now that you've mastered Alahamora, no lock is unbreakable. Uh, but do feel free to keep finding demigai statues and removing those moons. I should have... Alohomora. Well, it's about time. I wonder there's anything left of me. Calm down. I'm here now. Calm down. Those perfumes outside have been talking about burning me! Me! If they weren't all sharing half a brain, they'd realize I'm worth more to them intact and at the three broomsticks. How is that? With everything I overhear, I have a veritable trove of information. Now, don't just stand there. I need to be back by cocktail hour. The place will be like a funeral without me. What if I don't want to return you to the Three Broomsticks? What on earth do you mean? What if I took you to the Hogshead instead? I've heard such nice things. Huh? What a funny little joke. Now, the Three Broomsticks, please. Oh, they're bound to be missing me terribly. Uh, be sure to carry me carefully, won't you? My pantaloons are already creased. Where have you put me? It's pitch black in here. I shan't stand for this. for this, leaving me in here with your unsanitary clutter. Get me out! What are you, a troll? All your heavy stamping about is going to damage my frame. Oh, 
Finally! Back on my wall and more angelic than ever. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I'm not usually one to give thanks. There's a sort of servant ring to it. But I suppose some gratitude is in order. As a show of goodwill, I'll exclude whatever misdeeds I hear about you in my reports to the headmaster. And I do hear quite a bit. Now, be off with you. I can't be seen talking to a student. Go on then, go! It's all right, everyone. I'm back. Hello. Are you here for Summoner's Court? That I am. Don't expect to be as lucky here as you were in Crossed Wands. Speaking of which, care to lose... I mean, play a match? <laughs> of course, Charlotte. Then may the best Summoner win. Accio! Precisely as planned. Yes. Hmm, nice technique. Precisely as planned. as planned. <laughs> Sting me with a billywig. I'll never top that. Well, you are good. I'm not too proud to admit when I've lost. Where did you learn to play like that? I practice as much as I can. Practice, eh? I suppose I could try that. Well, you've only one opponent left now. I won't say more than that, but let's just say he's the best for a reason. the sheer nerve taking them down. Pardon me, is everything all right? No, no it's not. We only had two bells to go, but she just had to go and spoil things. I'm afraid I don't follow. Who spoiled things? Also, what bells? <sighs> Professor Black ordered Mr. Moon to take down the bells in the bell tower. Said they were giving him a headache. Those bells are a part of Hogwarts. I wasn't about to let that happen. So, I asked my friend Adelaide to help me put them back. We've always been a duo of sorts, Adelaide and Evangeline. Addie and Evie. Anyway, it was going swimmingly until Black started asking questions. Then she wasn't comfortable with our rule-breaking. Now I'm stuck, unable to tell which bell goes where. Is it really that important that the bells go back up? Is it really that important? They're part of the school's history. Those bells likely told a young Merlin that he was running late to charms, or called Ignatia Wildsmith to dinner. We can't simply fiddle with history. We're meant to be its stewards. It's certainly an odd decree, even for Black. Taking down the bells for a headache. I agree. I thought it might also have been that they interrupted his hourly naps. That's all he does in his office, you know. But then I heard... 
Can you keep a secret? I can. I heard from Alice, who heard from Ollie, who heard from Eugenia, that it's because the bells reminded him of his wedding day. Breaks out in a sweat every hour on the hour. But mum's the word. If only two bells are left, isn't it fairly easy to tell which goes where? Easy for you, perhaps. I happen to be tone deaf. Mother likes to say I couldn't carry a tune if it hopped on my back like a chocolate frog. No point putting them back in if they don't sound just as they did before, for the sake of historical accuracy. Perhaps I could help put the bells back up. Really? Oh, that would be wonderful. The bells are in the bell tower just above the music room. You're certainly of more help than Adelaide. I imagine the bells are just inside the bell tower. I don't even find her interesting. She's a ball. The bells must be upstairs. up there somehow. Wingardium Leviosa, perhaps. Leviosa! <laughs> too hard. Evangeline should be pleased about this, even if Black isn't. The bells are back up, Evangeline. Ah, oh, you're a credit to the school. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait for the headmaster to hear them. I wish I could see his face. Future generations may not truly appreciate what you've done, but I do. And I hope that you do as well. I don't know how much this means for me and for Hogwarts. You're my summoner's court opponent, Professor Ronan. Indeed I am. <laughs> Professors are allowed to have fun once in a while, too, you know. Of course. I look forward to playing against you. And I you. I've been playing this for eons, so you haven't the chance of winning. How about we get started anyway? I'm ready. No time like the present. I do not recall teaching you how to play like that. Akio. We all make mistakes. And there you have it. Yet another opportunity to learn and improve. Akio! No way to treat a professor. 
Delightful to see such mastery from one your age. Well done. You've beaten me at my own game. I had a good teacher. A flatterer, I see. <laughs> Although I dare say it's not unwarranted. I shall accept the compliment humbly. As the new summoner's court champion, you have earned a token of recognition. Do not let it go to your head. King Smedley's will always look upon you as a trusted ally and friend. Control to a game of musical chairs. Care to guess who won? Crap! I'm not ready for Professor Bin's lecture. I forgot my pillow. In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless wizard cloaks were lost. Actually, we do know the number. 632... But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmose the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Revelio. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh... That wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, and, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly, some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I... I think I know that name. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Oh, of course. Lodgok said he was an ancestor of Renrock. Oh, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Revelio. Hmm, this isn't quite right. Let's keep searching. And that all students introduce themselves to this hero of Hogwarts. Is that... This Grimbold looks What a hero of the... Hmm. Oh, yes. I see you found Grimbold Weft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of the scholarly pursuit. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir F. Buddle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. 
standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower is a retinue. Ergo. Hogwarts founders could never have achieved such architectural majesty without the aid. Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Afpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Afpuddle's affability was his undoing. Died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Pity goblins and wizards can't get along. True. But imagine how dull my lectures would be without goblin rebellions to discuss. Mm, history does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they... Why would anyone care enough to remove my demigai statues? Pardon me, sir, but about those curious demigai statues I've seen... What? Who are you? Why do you ask? They're quite clever. Oh, thank you. A lot of craftsmanship and care went into them. I, I assume... So you did create them? I... Uh, yes, I did. It was a ploy to give that pathetic oaf Moon a taste of the grief he caused me years ago. You are the one who's been pilfering them. I am, at the request of Mr. Moon. I received your owl. On your stationery. <clears throat> ah. Well... Fitting Moon would enlist a student. Too cowardly to do it himself. Hasn't changed a bit. Even when we were at school, he was a cowardly bully. Gave me a horrible nickname, which I shan't repeat. I was thrilled when we left school and he seemed gone for good. Then I started seeing him around Hogsmeade. It was too much. Even if I do take satisfaction in that his life's destiny was to be a lowly caretaker. Mr. Moon does a good deal for the school, and he's taught me a lot. He's terrified of those statues. <laughs> I know. You should have seen his face when that boggart appeared. Oh, priceless. That's when I knew what I needed to do. I simply didn't want to encounter him anymore. So, I shrewdly put a boggart in his path to learn his greatest fear. I then created the demigai statues to keep him in his place, so to speak. The moons were inspired play on his name. It worked brilliantly. Until you started clearing them out. The statues are a form of bullying. You're no better than him. Perhaps it's time you both moved on. Ah, fair point, I suppose. If they've terrified him, as you say, he may have learned his lesson. Something's wrong, it is. I know it. Even the gentle beasts are getting... Mr. Moon, I've learned who's behind the demigai statues. It was a classmate of yours that you bullied. Piers Pemberton. Oh, am I a known? Pigtails Piers! I don't think he likes being called that. Of course he does! Oh, we had such flowing locks. Oh, we used to laugh about them. <laughs> I laugh the hardest of all. Clever, clever man. Huh? I'd no idea he was so devious. 
<laughs> I must go and congratulate him. Whatever statues remain seem less terrifying now that I know they were put out by old pigtails. Continue collecting them if you like. As for me, I'm gonna go and pay a visit to my old friend. I can't go back there. Is there something I can help you with, Mr... Adley. Edgar Adley. Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Blast Milo and his mad schemes. Milo? He was my friend. Came to me a few days ago with a brilliant plan to make some quick galleons. All I had to do was follow him into the Forbidden Forest. Had I had known he wanted to procure venom from a living acromantula. Oh, poor Milo. He didn't deserve to go like that. I'm very sorry to hear about your friend. Oh, thank you. I can't think of it. Milo's body is still in that cave with the absconder. The absconder? Aye, Milo's name for the acromantula. He did have a flair for the dramatic. In fact, as he died, Milo begged me to take his heirloom pocket watch so that his daughter would have something to remember him by. But I... I fled. Why would someone risk their life for spider venom? As a potion ingredient, acromantula venom is incredibly valuable. In large part because it is, as Paul Milo has proven, impossible to get from a live acromantula. If I have time, I can try to collect the heirloom watch, Mr. Adley. You can't possibly go to the acromantula's cave. You'd be killed. Please, forget I said anything. Now, where could that Aquamantula cave be? <laughs> the cave must be somewhere in this maze. I wonder what else is in here. This could be the Acromantula cave Mr. Adley mentioned. I need to bring this heirloom back to Mr. Adley. There's a victory that came. Oh, 
Ah, you look none the worse for wear. Oh, I take it you decided against entering the Absconder's Cave, then? Mr. Adley, I retrieved the heirloom pocket watch from Milo's body. <laughs> Merlin's beard! How did you? Actually, I, I don't want to know. I don't want to think about that Acromantula ever again. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad Milo's daughter will have something to remember him by. I am too. As far-fetched as his schemes were, Milo was a good friend and I shall miss him. Please, sir, uh, accept this reward for your trouble. I should be going now. Thank you. Milo can rest in peace now that his wishes have been fulfilled and his daughter has something to remember him by. Pardon? Were you calling to me? I was. I'm Marianne Moffat. Pleasure. At the moment, I'm having a great deal of trouble trying to find a particular Derricol. A Derricol? What's that? It's a magical bird. Muggles call it a dodo and believe the creature to be extinct. But that's because it can disappear whenever humans draw near. I'm worried about a large albino derricol known as Gwenaira. She's a local legend, so of course poachers are after her. If I had her, I'd treat her like a queen. And I could use her molted feathers as fashion accessories. Seems you're more concerned with the feathers than the bird. But she'd be safer with you than with poachers. Indeed. They'd pluck her feathers and likely kill her when they were through. I can't seem to rescue her, and I'm worried the Derricals don't trust me since I've been hanging about their den. Why are you fixated on Gwenaira and not rescuing all the Derricals? Gwenaira is special. She's more attractive to poachers with her lovely plumage. They'll try harder to take her. The other Derricals seem to have managed evading poachers quite well on their own. Can you tell me what the Diracol den looks like? It's down by the shore, on a sort of overhanging cliff. You'll recognise it by all of the Diracols lolling about. I'll keep an eye out for a large white Diracol. Oh, thank you. Those gorgeous feathers. And she'd be safe. One last thing. She seems to spend her days in hiding. I've only ever seen her at night. I do hope you're able to save her. Be prepared to chase her. I sometimes wonder if she actually enjoys the pursuit. This must be the Diracol den that Miss Moffat told me about. Now, where is Gwenaira? I need to let Miss Moffat know. Place? Oh, hello! Miss Moffat, I caught Gwenaira. That's incredible! Was it terribly difficult? She was difficult to track down, but I managed in the end. Believe me, I know. Well, may I have her now? Of course. Oh, you're too kind. She has such exquisite plumage. Oh, I shall make the finest attire from her feathers. And she'll have a good life too, of course. Oh. Thank you so much for bringing me Gwynaira. I shall keep her safe and only use her feathers sparingly. Hello, madam. Is everything all right? I'm simply beside myself since Rococo ran away. He's my pet Niffler. I'm sorry to hear that your pet is missing. Thank you. I appreciate your words. I mean, I've had him for years. He's lovely company. 
Whilst on our morning constitutional the other day, south of here, he and I stumbled upon Henrietta's hideaway. And they say that Henrietta was a paranoid recluse, filled her castle with all manner of traps to keep thieves from pinching her valuables. As we drew near, the morning sun reflected off something in a window, and before I knew it, Rococo was off. Oh, I've been worried sick, but I'm not about to meddle with Merlin knows what's inside that house, or the Ashwinders that are lurking about. Why did Henrietta feel the need to protect her house like she did? Henrietta was a baroness who married well, more than a few times. Her immense wealth drove her to a life of suspicion and isolation. The more wealth she amassed, the more paranoid she became of losing it. Hence the terrifying traps throughout the hideaway. Not even her family has been willing to deal with them to get to her fortune. Why don't you just get Rococo back yourself? Henrietta's hideaway is treacherous enough, but add Ashwinders into the picture and, well, I love Rococo, but I love staying alive more. I'll keep an eye out for Rococo. Oh, that's terribly kind. But stay away from the hideaway. Far too dangerous. If someone does find him in the hideaway, they shall be well rewarded. Henrietta's treasures are theirs for the taking. She certainly won't mind now. I should be going now. Thank you. This must be the castle where Miss Coffee's nephew of Ashwinders. I'd better find a way around them. You're the one. I know what you're doing. I got one. I hate serious. What you and the centaur? Who goes there? Bombarda. Think you're clever, don't you? Bombarda. Yeah. Shame nobody saw that. I know a Merlin trial when I see one. Ugh. I hope the Ashwinders haven't done anything with Rococo. Where in Merlin's name am I? Revelio. Incendio. There we go. Treasure. That nef Ashwinders. Those who think that their plan is the sole path to victory should ruin the Bombarda! Now, this has become you by the Bombarda! Oh, 
What a dreadful lot. Yeah. this? Some sort of treasure map? Treasure. Rococo must have been through here. These coins. Oh, this Niffler is a tricky one. There, there. Let's get back to Miss Coffee. I found your Niffler. Oh, goodness, really? Oh, thank you. You're very brave. I was at my wit's end. How's my sweet Rococo? May I have him back? I'm sure he'll be happy to go home. He will. Oh, my brave little explorer. My greedy, greedy boy. Oh, I can't wait to get him home. Thank you again for what you did. From now on, I'll keep Rococo on a lead whenever we go out. Did it? And look, treasure. Huh. 
The Ashwinders cannot be allowed to run roughshod over our way of life. Is everything all right, madam? Olivier, Madame Olivier, and no, everything is not all right. The vermin known as the Ashwinders have infested nearby Clagmar Castle, disrupting not only our sense of peace, but our valuable trade. It appeared that they were finally going to slither away until Sylvanas Selwyn arrived. Sylvanas Selwyn? Head rat. My guess is that if someone were to take out Selwyn, the rest of the Ashwinders would disperse. But Selwyn is a skilled wizard. I certainly can't take care of him myself. Believe me, I wish I could. I'm at my wit's end. Selvana Selwyn? I thought Victor Rookwood headed up the Ashwinders. Selwyn's one of Rookwood's lieutenants. Not quite as terrifying as Theophilus Harlow, but a menace nonetheless. Where is Clagmar Castle? Clagmar Castle's along the south coast, south and to the west of here. What's so dangerous about the Ashwinders? They're not your typical thieves and extortionists. Not that typical thieves and extortionists are lovely company. They would not leave poor Bella Navarro alone. She'd given them everything, but still they kept threatening her. She was ready to go back to her family in Italy, almost lost her livelihood. They are ruthless. I could take care of Selwyn for you. Goodness, no. I'd never ask a student to confront Selwyn. But I'm offering a nice bounty on his head. Feel free to put the word out. I can assure you. Now perhaps I'll scout around the Fellcroft for something to poach. Selwyn has been taken care of. You defeated Selwyn? Merlin's beard. A student took down one of Rookwood's top filth. Then I suppose this bounty is yours. Well deserved. I'm glad I could help protect Cragcroft from the Ashwinders. The thieves will finally leave us alone. Thanks to you. You're welcome in Cragcroft any time. It's such a pleasant place when it's not... Oh, I do hope Mary and I... Excuse me, sir. Are you all right? Just barely. But I don't want to trouble a student with my woes. I am indeed a student, but I could very well be able to help you. I'm not so sure. Name's Crispin Dunn, by the way. I trade in the surrounding hamlets. Do the most business in Aronshire. A lovely little hamlet. Just stunning gardens. Just the other day, the Daily Prophet ran an article on its scenic hedgerows. Actually, b before I go on, I should ask... Are you afraid of spiders? Spiders don't bother me at all. You'd be impressed by how many I've dispatched lately. Lucky you. The hamlet's overrun with the vile things, and they're acting abnormally aggressively. I'm concerned about my customers, of course, but it appears that most of the hamlet's residents fled to safety. It's my friend Mary I worry about. I haven't heard from her, and I fear she's trapped in her cottage. Understandable. But why don't you check on her yourself? I would, but I have a crippling fear of the eight-legged beasts, which I, unlike you, seem incapable of conquering. I don't know what to do. Can you think of anyone who can help Mary? Why are there so many spiders in Aronshire all of a sudden? I honestly don't know. I've never seen so many spiders in all of my life. It's almost as if someone's breeding them. They've trapped the entire hamlet in webs. I was lucky to escape it all. Mary always has a way with these beasts. It's very concerning not to hear from her. Why is it you can't conquer your fear of spiders? When I was a small child, I was being tormented and chased by a group of local bullies and slid into the hollow of a tree to hide. Within moments, spiders were crawling over every inch of my body. Seemed I'd stumbled on a nest. I couldn't move, paralysed by fear of the spiders and an equally profound fear of the wizards I knew were just outside the tree. I was there for what seemed hours. I can feel their legs on me now, just talking about it. Ugh. Why didn't you ask the Ministry for help? I did. Reached out to anyone who would listen. Tribe Minister Spout old Spavin himself. But evidently they have their hands full with who knows what else. It seems this little hamlet has to fend for itself. 
I'll try my very best, Mr. Dunn. Please do. If you can think of anyone that may be brave enough to help, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. They'll find Aaron just southeast of Hogsmeade, just below the train station. This must be Aronshire. I'd best keep an eye out for spiders. Bombarda! Finger! They're even more about to than I expected. Bombarda! Finger! Bombarda! Surely that's the last of them. Off on another adventure, are we? <laughs> oh no, this must be Mary. was breeding these things in her cellar. That means there are more underground. <sighs> I'll need to destroy every last spider in that cellar if this is to end. This is where Mary bred the spiders. They're not here now. Ah, well, this isn't a good sign. These spiders have gone somewhere. Revelio. A ladder. I'm not sure I want to know where this leads. Best be ready for whatever I may find down there. Hexax, I need to find and destroy all of these before the situation gets even worse. That's one Hexax destroyed. I should get the rest. Incendio! Incendio! This is definitely going to be a chance. Not my fault you're a deadly great spider. any more than you already have. I suppose I know what happened to Mary Portman now. She was breeding the spiders. I 
hate to think that they see me, but I don't see them. Revenia. of the spider sacks. one and she's angry Mr. Dunn, I have some news. Thank Merlin. About my sweet friend Mary. It seems poor Mary was breeding spiders in her home for profit and vastly underestimated their propensity to multiply. Oh, Mary. What untoward scheme were you involved in? If she needed financial assistance, she could have just come to me. She didn't deserve this. Few do. I am sorry about your friend, but you'll be relieved to know that I cleared out the spiders. It's safe to return now. You? You cleared out the spiders? I can't believe it, but I'm certainly relieved. I imagine the first order of business will be to help the amulet rebuild. I suppose I have nothing to fear from dead spiders. That's the spirit. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you again for all you've done. I shall keep you apprised of the Hamlet's rebuilding. Glad I could be of help, and I look forward to visiting your shop the next time I'm in Aronshire. To dearly departed Mary. <laughs> <laughs> 